So my name is Lex, and I am from Venezuela. I moved here to the States when I was 17. And um, funny enough, I wanted to do media production, but uh, my family was concerned that I couldn't find a job in that afterwards. And for people that uh, are in the States, um, going back to their parents' home is always an option. But for me, going back to Venezuela was not an option. So I decided to go into business school instead. And so um, I pursue a career in sales, project management, startup, uh, operations and um, I connected with who is now my business partner and he was a he believed in crypto very early on and we decided to partner together back in 20, 20 2020 yes and uh, he introduced me to NFTs and it was an instant click because I come from a family where there's a lot of artists. Uh, and I also wanted to kind of be in the creative artistic space. Um, but because of life, I just ended up in a different path. And uh, we decided to go all in into NFTs him with his knowledge in cryptocurrency and believing in the technology and for me with a passion for for discovering artists and appreciating art um, and now a year later we have well I have curated over 500 pieces in the NFT space and my mission is to continue to uplift artists in the NFT space and um, spread awareness of the Web3 and NFT community and um, create content that can help other people understand a little bit more about um, the space and what to do, what not to do, and how can people find success. No, I haven't really. Um, no, uh, I I don't really think about that too much. Uh, I do think that I can impact people from my country through the things that I'm doing because NFTs and crypto is universal like anyone can have access to it and so I think my hope is to have artists that are from Venezuela um, get into the space and um, make a living there uh, the way that they haven't been able to do that before because of the economic crisis that the country has um, but as far as political uh, I haven't really dived into into that topic. I've always been very observant of other people's stories. I grew up in um, in an interesting position where one side of my family was very um, I wouldn't say well well off but they were they were okay middle class um, and then the other side of my family was extremely poor and I saw the differences in the attitudes uh, of both sides and I always wanted to do the things that my family on this side were constantly doing to have a better life and so I learn through stories and watching other people struggle or go through different situations 
And also, I get inspired by stories. There, there's um. I've always been a little bit self-aware of my how I'm so young, and I feel like people won't take me as seriously because I'm young. And um, and then I learned that uh, one of the um, trainers of SpaceX, the people that, that send people to space, is a female that's 28 years old. And if she can send people to space, I can do anything. So for me, when it, I want to share my stories for other people that maybe need that encouragement of, you know, oh, I'm too young or I'm, I'm a woman. So I can't do that. So I think it just comes from me learning from other people's stories. So now that I am in the story, I want to share that with other people so they can create their own too. The noise and the lack of education. People don't know where to go and sometimes find it incredibly complex and overwhelming. And on the flip side, there's a lot of people that are just spreading noise and content that is not really true, but because it's a space that is so new, people will just think that it is. So I think that we haven't found a way to um, sift through the noise and that causes people to get involved in projects that may not have the best intentions and then they get burned and then they don't want to be involved with NFTs. So the, the people that spread misinformation within the space um, are definitely a huge problem for mass adoption. However, because it's so new, it's just a natural process of finding out who the people that actually share valuable information and facts to, um, to establish themselves as those people that actually have the, the people's interests in mind. Um, so I think it's an issue that is going to get resolved just over time. Um, and it's just one of those things that we have to go through because we're in the early stages and kind of like the wild west of, of the Web3 space. You think it'll fix itself? I think people will like fix the, it. Like the universe does? I think people with, people with good intentions, like, like me, like Art Gnome, like Imani, like people here today, I think we are gonna be the ones who fix it and um, more people will join that know what they're talking about and can show where they're getting that information. Um, and hopefully people can get a little bit better at, at choosing their source. Okay, so, I'm so happy about this. Um, last year I decided to create a show called The Joy of NFTs. Uh, the reason why is because I wanted to, again, told you I wanted to study media production, so this is kind of where my personal passion comes from of listening to those stories and sharing them with the world. So in this show, I invite two artists and two collectors um, to come on and open up the conversation. And during the show, um, we have a challenge, a 10 minute challenge where the artist can sketch um, the beginning of what uh, a piece that we will later, later mint. 
Um, so it's really cool because you can get to watch their whole story plus their creative process as they start creating a new piece. So because of the show, I was looking for a marketplace where we could where we can sell these pieces that the artists are creating during the show. And so I got connected with Super Rare. And Super Rare is now doing this thing called Super Rare Spaces, which is an independent gallery where people that are not from Super Rare can bring on different artists. So they have done only two space races. So only people that have the rare tokens can vote on who they bring on as uh, independent curators. And I enter the second super rare space race uh, last month. And the voting came in last week, actually. And we were part of the winners. So what this means is that now I can not only put the pieces that this amazing artist have created for the show on Super Air, but also a lot of artists' ultimate goal, especially in the NFT space, is to be in a prestigious marketplace like Super Rare. And so for me, what, it, what at the beginning was just something that I needed to figure out for my show became this opportunity that I could provide for millions of people that want to be on there. Um, so I'm really excited that I now have that space and I'm just really passionate because there's so many um, unheard stories out there and uh, I am in this incredibly blessed position to hear those stories and bring them on here. So that's that was that's the whole super air space uh, topic is, and uh, I'm just really, really, really excited to see where it all goes. And this is just kind of like the beginning of things, but I know it's going to be a great journey. One thing that stuck out for me was um, the education portion that you guys have um, have uh, incorporated into the event. Uh, usually when you go to an event, people that go are people that already kind of know uh, about NFTs. And you guys are allowing students to come and learn for free about NFTs and have a whole team dedicated to answering questions. Um, I think that's incredibly important because as we talked about before, one of the biggest, the biggest problems in the space is the misinformation. So I think that's a great initiative that a lot of other events should also implement um, so I'm just really happy that I was invited here. Um, the the panelists and the speakers are all great OGs in the space that know what they're talking about. So I, I think you guys have done an, an incredible job so far, for sure. <laughs>